Uh, Mr. Dales. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, Mr. Rosenberg, you've heard just about every member here express their condolences for the loss of your son <clears throat> back in 2010. Uh, I feel your pain here. The, uh, I just want you to know that uh, tomorrow, this week, I will be reintroducing the Justice for Angel Families Act, and that legislation would amend the Crime Victims Fund to expand funds to angel families who are victims of homicide by an illegal immigrant. And I think Ms. Jackson Lee just expressed her sorrow to you and, and the pain you. So I'm hoping that I can get some bipartisan support on that to help victims individuals that have been uh, murdered as a result of uh, activities from illegal aliens. So hopefully we can get some bipartisan support on that. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Fabricatori, Fabricatori <clears throat> thank you for being here. The, the shocking decline in enforcement activity, my friend, at our southern border, you know, must be sickening to a guy like you, you know, a ICE uh, enforcement removal officer like yourself. Uh, I can't imagine how you feel how you feel having dedicated your entire career to enforcement of U.S. immigration laws and then seeing what's happening today. Uh, I want to talk uh, about some of the arrest numbers uh, that we see behind me on this chart. Uh, they were pulled uh, from ICE's own data. <clears throat> Before we get into that, I just want to let you know we talked that you talked about detainers, ICE detainers. I was, I was a sheriff for eight years, I was in it for almost 30. Sheriff, I, as a sheriff, I complied with every single ICE detainer that ever came through my office. And now we had a few that, that didn't, and, and Texas created a law that stated that if a sheriff does not comply with a detainer from ICE, that they could potentially be removed from office, and I support that. So hopefully sheriffs have straightened themselves out a little bit and, and they comply with every single ICE uh, detainer. Can, can you explain why the number uh, in arrests have dropped so drastically? over the last couple of years? Well, I think there are uh, definitely a lot of different reasons. One, the, the priority is for sure, but also because of what's happening at the border moves into the interior. Sure. So, so every single state is now a border state. And ICE officers are now having to process those cases from the border at sure. their ICE offices. So instead of being on a street making these arrests, yeah. they're forced to stay in the office and just process cases. Got it. Got it. I, my time as sheriff, you know, uh, I had to, I ran for Congress because I was just disgusted what took place at the southern border. I, I just, I'm going to highlight a few of the cases that I had. I had six undocumented immigrants I burglarized 70 homes. Six of them, they were undocumented. They were in Fort Bend County. They were in Brazoria County. Uh, we arrested six of them. All of them had entered the U.S. illegally. They were from Honduras and Mexico. Uh, what's interesting is that when they burglarized a home, you know who they targeted? They targeted Indian, Asian, and Middle Eastern communities. Think about that now. They targeted the minority migrant communities. They stole hides and jewelry. They stole money. January 26, 2017, we arrested 17, 17 individuals. They were from Colombia. 120 break-ins, again, stole jewelry, purses, working with HPD, Sheila. We were working with HPD, worked very, very hard. One of the individuals, this bad hombre, he was actually uh, deported in 2014 and had ties to terrorism. He had terrorist ties to the FARC, which is a terrorist group coming out of Colombia. A lot of these guys have been deported more than one time, yet they continue to find their way back here to commit more crime. Three of them had been previously deported. And this guy, I've highlighted him before. This gentleman killed a senior lady in, in my county, and he's from Honduras. And he, let's take it. So he's been deported six previous times. So we, we, we talked earlier, you know, that we're going to talk about what's happening inside the country, right? But when you're in the country and you commit a crime and you're deported, how do you get back here so quickly? This guy came back December 2001, 2012, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. They're back within several months, this guy, and he killed. So we have serious, serious issues. Mr. Batista, I just want to kind of talk. I know Representative Nadler brought up to you about this, this white supremacist or nationalist or something, the domestic terrorist that killed individuals, uh, shot and killed. It is horrible. Horrible what happened, and, and he asked you, you know, how has that affected the, the Mexican community, uh, and, and what was your answer? Did you say they're kind of going underground, do you believe? They're, they're scared as a result? Chairman McClintock, uh, okay. Mr. Nels, yeah. that's correct. Okay. Well, how do you think the communities 
the Asians and the Pakistanis and the Middle Eastern communities feel when their homes are being burglarized, they steal all their family heirlooms, right? They're here trying to you know, live and, and try to come here legally, and then they are victims of crime by these illegal alien criminals. How do you think they feel? What should they feel? You're a sheriff or old lawman? I think, uh, Mr. Nels, I think we should all be outraged by any criminal Mr. Activity. Batista, they're madder than hell. They're madder than hell. And it requires guys like me and others to put these individuals, and it's the federal yes. government's responsibility to keep them out of our country. Okay, With that, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, Ms.